So, uh, Michelle, you kind of want to kick us off here for our, our new Power Hour today? You betcha. Welcome, everybody, to another QB Power Hour. We're very glad to have you joining us today. Today, we're going to continue our series on QuickBooks Online Advanced, the Features Deep Dive. Today, Dan and I are going to be talking to you about tasks and workflows, and I'm really excited to share this with you and demo some of this in QuickBooks Online um, so you can see how it's going to really save you a ton of time. And we're really excited today that we have a special guest joining us, so we'll let Ted introduce himself in just a second here. My name is Michelle Long. CPA, MBA in entrepreneurship, um, owner of Long for Success, um, been a trainer for Intuit since 2007. And as you all know, I just really love this and love helping you all learn more about um, QuickBooks and, and marketing and value pricing and all that stuff. So I'm glad to have you joining us today. Dan, how about you? Yeah, my name is Dan DeLong, owner of Danwith. I worked at Intuit for nearly 18 years. I'm a co-host, of course, today, and I also do a workshop Wednesdays, uh, oddly enough, on Wednesdays. So tomorrow there'll be <laughs> another workshop where we'll talk about some of these uh, QuickBooks things uh, at schoolofbookkeeping.com. Uh, I also was a technical editor for QBO for Dummies in the series of fourth, uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh edition. Uh, so Ted, we're so excited you're here. <laughs> Tell us a little about a bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you both so much for having me. It's awesome to be with you both and then all the folks that have tuned in live to the YouTube stream. Uh, Michelle, like you, we just got a pandemic puppy as well. Oh, yay! And uh, I, my daughter, I have three children. My daughter, our youngest, has been begging to have a puppy since she was born. And I oh. told her she's now 10. I said, this is already your lifetime achievement award. You're very precocious <laughs> because you convinced my wife, who's not a big dog person, to get a puppy finally. So that's been awesome. Oh, how exciting! One of the one of the few silver linings, but very welcome in the midst of uh, all of the pandemic crazy. Yes. yes. So quickly, quickly on me. I was born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee, and um, because of my, I think my grandfather's legacy of working at a Ford dealership. I just grew up loving to drive. And so a fun fact I thought I would share with you all is that I've actually been to every state in the continental US. Wow, how cool. And, um, and a lot of that was, it was actually traveling with my grandfather all over the country, which was really fun. So we can, we can talk about some of those stories <laughs> later on. Um, I've been at Intuit for four years. Before I was at Intuit, I had um, a couple of different jobs in the startup world, started a, a venture fund to do seed venture investing and then prior to that, I actually worked in consulting for six years. And I think it, it was that specific background, really understanding the power of great client service that um, really put me uh, in, in the consideration set for stepping into this role with all of our accountants. And I think I've really loved in my first six months in the role, just getting to meet so many of you and hearing your own passion for client service it puts me back in those days. And I just... Um, I honestly have been so fired up by the passion and the spirit of this community to go serve clients, especially in the midst of COVID. And um, it's been truly inspiring. So a bunch of themes that I'll share with you all, maybe if we get around to it, but uh, those are just a couple of fun facts about myself. <laughs> Great. Right. We're very glad to have you joining us today. So a little uh, details about the, power, the QB Power Hour. It's every other Tuesday at, at noon Eastern. Um, and some upcoming things we're going to be, uh, next one we're going to be having is uh, Niche Nuances. We'll be continuing that series because uh, it's very, been very a very popular search term on our website about real estate. So we're going to talk about real estate rentals with uh, professional uh, Gita Faust will jo be joining us then. Um, and then we're going to have Lysio come back. Uh, there was a little bit of a challenge with them when they joined us the last time. So we're going to have Lysio come back and they're going to talk about how, how you can get your clients to respond to your requests the first time. That would be amazing. <laughs> Which, <laughs> right. So, um, and, and they have a great tool to be able to do that. Um, and then we'll continue back with our, our QBO advanced feature deep dive series with the, the reporting enhancements. Now this one was actually, this webinar today was supposed to be uh, the, re the reporting enhancements and Hector Garcia was going to be coming on. Uh, to talk about that, but because of the change in the tax deadline, because uh, he's a CPA that actually does taxes, right, Michelle? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a little he's a little uh, busy, swamped uh, right now to to, uh, to to really dive 
do anything other than deep dive into taxes. <laughs> um, and of course, we have the links there for the uh, PDFs of, of the slides. Uh, you can also get them on our, 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 uh, our, our, our website. Uh, you can watch all of the uh, historical webinars on Michelle's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and then, of course, we also, also have the podcast uh, as well. Uh, just a little housekeeping. Um, since I am in not in my home anymore, I don't have dual monitors. <laughs> uh, I'm actually got a got a web uh, a, a laptop to the left of me here, so I can kind of facilitate this uh, this presentation here today. Um, so uh, if you see me turn, that's that's fine. Um, but that is going to be that's kind of like just to set the set the stage. And if you have any questions. Uh, please put them in the Q&A section rather than the chat. The chat and tends to just kind of scroll past. And if you have a specific question as we go through anything here today, put it in the Q&A. Uh, that way we can see it and address it uh, specifically as we go through uh, today's webinar. See, somebody put a question in there and it, <laughs> just as I was talking. <laughs> uh, so our agenda today, uh, we'll have a, a little bit of a chat with, with Ted. Uh, kind of where he's been, what he's done, <laughs> and where things are going. Um, and then we'll talk about the, the tasks and over uh, and workflows overview and some some use case use cases and resources uh, for you to, to be able to utilize that. So the first thing is our first poll. Uh, so how many clients do you have using uh, QBO Advanced? Um, of the of the clients that you currently have now um, my understanding is that uh, everyone in uh, that is that is using QBO accountant, not that QBOA, but the, <laughs> this QBOA uh, for accountants should have all of the advanced features uh, available in the yearbooks section. So don't count yourself because uh, <laughs> when you when you're thinking of that, but how many uh, end clients do, do you have uh, using QBO advanced? And, you know, Dan, as I was reviewing stuff, getting ready for today's webinar, I was looking at these workflows as, you know, because the tasks are great, but for me, the workflows are just, just game changing. And I was thinking, you know, that alone makes QBO Advance really compelling for a lot of our small business clients. And I'm so glad that we now have that available for us in yeah. our QBOA. So I can't wait to share this with everybody and demo that and show you guys how much time <laughs> it can save um, by automating a lot of these workflows and things. Yeah. And I mean, initially when it was there, I was like, oh, OK, that's kind of cute. But <laughs> but the, the enhancements of that feature over time has really kind of uh, grown. And I think we're at a point where we wanna uh, really kind of, it, it is now a time-saving feature. Um, I think it's, you know, it's it's in, it's not, you know, it's still got room for, for enhancements. And we'll ask a, a, another poll question about, you know, where you think that, uh, you know, those enhancements should be directed, but um, it's the, 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 the enhancement that they've made in the last, a few months has been um, really like a quant. It's almost like a quantum leap, you know, from what it was before to what it is today. is a is a really great uh, great feature enhancement in and time saver. Uh, so let me go ahead and stop the poll. And it looks like one to two is our is our main uh, main main. Uh, I don't know what, how do you, how do you say that with a poll uh, <laughs> top. It was the majority. Leave. It was the there majority. However, <laughs> somebody pointed out in the Q&A that we messed up and we didn't put zero in there. So the one to two oh. could be skewed with a lot of people oh. that were zero. So we apologize <laughs> for that. It's just for information only. So sorry about that, everyone. So it could be zero to two. I was going to say, that's a, <laughs> definitely a poll designed by marketing, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Everybody, well, you know, at least you've got one that's yourself. <laughs> That's right. Now that we know. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is, um, you know, we're, we're just going to talk a little bit with, uh, with, with Ted here first. I'm going to stop the sharing so that we can actually just kind of see each other. Ah, whoa. <laughs> you got it stopped. <laughs> I hear myself and. <laughs> so Ted, do you want to go ahead and, go. And, and start it off a little bit here? Yeah, sure. I realized I started talking 
I, I realized, oh, in the intro, I should have been much shorter. So <laughs> that's you know, okay. <laughs> nothing, nothing like keeping it all flowing. Yeah. So I think, first of all, just thank you both and, and the collective community for having me on. It's great to be with you. Um, as I said, I've been in the role for about six months. And one of the, I would say, where half of my time has been going has just been getting to know the community, hearing the stories, hearing about your collective passion for client service. Why did you get into accounting? What sustained you? And then what can we be doing to really be deepening our relationship with you? And so I would say the, the first kind of tenant, if you will, of what I've been up to is not only getting to know you, but then saying, hey, what are our opportunities to deepen our relationship with you? And the resounding bit of feedback that I've been getting is just being in events like this where I get to connect and hear more stories. So that's, so again, thank you for having me. Let me do that. Um, and then also being, I think, more active, right? I know um, people like Caleb Jenkins have been saying, hey, Ted, get out there in social media and engage with us. So I've been working as well to, I'm not a big fan of Twitter, but I've been doubling down on Twitter and uh, getting to know more of you that way. So that's been great. Thematically, what I'm hearing from you, oh, let me pause, Michelle, you're about to say something. I was going to say, instead of Twitter, spend more time in our QB, in QB Power <laughs> Hour Facebook group. It's way active and I think it's much better than Twitter. <laughs> of course, we're not biased at all. No biased yeah, well, at I, was, all. Yeah. I was blown away to see the amount of engagement on one of the questions that you all put out about, hey, what are the opportunities to improve QBO? And the answers were yes. pages and pages and pages. And uh, I just love the passion. Of that's that's one thing you'll discover about our community and our pro advisor tribe, if you will. We are very mm. outspoken and not afraid to share our feedback. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. For better yeah. or worse, you will hear it. <laughs> yes, yes. But I love, I mean, so I grew up in the South and I left the South candidly because I found people didn't shoot as straight as I wanted to shoot. And this community, whether you live in the South or not, you have none of that Southern euphemism. Uh, <laughs> direct and honest has been the tenor of the feedback. And um, it's great. And so again, the, the encouragement I've gotten is, hey, shoot straight. Don't sugarcoat things with us keep asking questions, keep listening. And then thematically, the other pieces that I hear are, hey, in that category of what are the improvement opportunities, I hear a lot about support, fixing yes. support. And so I'll come to some of the things that we're up to actively making, trying to make that better, but it would be great just to hear the specific problems that you all are encountering as we're going along. And, and we can, if you all be kind enough to share the chat with me after, I can take that as more fodder for the change that we need to be driving. So, yeah. so that's one of the big themes. And I think the, the piece that I also am hearing from you all is the power of the connection of this community has been, um, it's been strengthened actually in COVID. You all have found, you already were working virtually many of you. And so for a lot of you are like, well, there's actually been no change to how I operate. You already were in the cloud, but as you know, a number of your clients who are maybe dragging their feet in getting to the cloud will now, you know, nothing like a pandemic when you can't leave your home uh, to really encourage that move and make the case for why to go online. And so I think the, um, the power of where you all already have been living in the future, now the rest of the nation, the rest of these industries are catching up to you all. So that's been fabulous. And, and, you know, Ted, I was talking to somebody else about this, too, and I really think a lot of us in the accounting community have Intuit to thanks for that. thank for that, because I remember it was probably 10 years ago, we were doing Freedom in the Cloud uh, seminars and road shows and going all around. Intuit was pushing us 10 years ago for moving to the cloud and learning mm -hmm. how to work remotely and doing all this. And, you know, we really helped people do that. So now I think a lot of us have realized, wow, we were ahead of the ball and able to be well positioned to help our clients at this time. So as much as some of us accounting professionals don't like change, Intuit encouraging us to make that change did in fact help us and, and really positioned us for this pandemic. But speaking of change, I know there are some frustrations which which we always have whenever there's change. Would you like to comment on some changes we've heard about in payroll? Yeah, sure. And I, and I think the, um, yeah, th thanks for the question. And again, like honoring what I've been hearing from all of you all, we just want to tackle these things head on, right? So last week, we sent out a communication to all of the accountants who were in our Intuit online payroll product, right? IOP for accountants and IOP enhanced. 
that we're going to be retiring these products and then transitioning everybody to the new QuickBooks online payroll. There were some, I think, uh, points where we didn't do as good a job as we needed to in terms of the clarity and the specificity of what was happening and why. So I'll just kind of knock out a couple of these and then we can, again, anything we didn't get that I'm not saying right, let me know and then we can follow up. But I think- Yeah, and I think just, just to kind of frame it for, for the yeah. folks that are, that are listening, uh, if you do have a specific uh, feedback for, for Intuit, uh, specifically about, around this, this transition, this the way it was handled or anything like that, Put it in the Q and A, uh, and we will uh, we will co collect that and and provide it to them. What we don't want to have is is a uh, is this webinar to be like a town hall mm -hmm. with Ted, where we're talking about online payroll and the the way that was handled, what what happened or what didn't happen, uh, and then we're uh, we're not talking about tasks and workflows, which is what we, <laughs> <laughs> which is what yeah, we're here exactly. to talk about. <laughs> yeah. So the so I think the the quick version is. The Intuit online payroll product will be retired at the end of the year. You will continue to be able to use it all year long without any interruption, right? So that's the first headline. Going forward, you're gonna be on the QuickBooks online payroll product. You'll be able to manage that through our QBOA product that you all know and we're continuing to make enhancements. Hopefully some of you have already gotten to experience the payroll tab in the client list in QBOA. We just started rolling that out last week or not last week, sorry, last month. And then we're gonna be moving everyone to about 100%. We wanted to get that done after the tax deadline when it shifted, we had to slow our roll, um, but that's coming. So timing wise, you're gonna to get to complete the year because we know shifting payroll products in the middle of the year, not a great thing, okay? So that's number one. <laughs> number two, <laughs> yeah. Number two, all of you accountants in QBOA will now have access to our QuickBooks Online Payroll Elite, the premium product for free. So that's great. All of you doing payroll before you were paying for it. Now you don't, and you get a lot of benefits in our elite product, including the uh, QuickBooks time, right? Correct. Exactly. Formally T-sheets for yep. those. Yep. Formally T-sheets. <laughs> yes. And yeah, yeah. I've gotten feedback on the color of the logo changing as well. Yeah. Uh, very familiar. Uh, so well, I, I, uh, just a side note yeah. there. I, when I worked at Intuit, uh, I started with QuickBooks 2000. And uh, that mm -hmm. was the year they removed uh, the, the icon bar at the top. And that was like, you took someone's child <laughs> and, and said, you know, that was, that was the biggest call driver was where's the icon bar. And of yeah. course, 2001, I mean, to, and to its credit, you know, they do listen to the feedback, you know, however colorful it might be. <laughs> and they, and they are, you know, they're not set in stone, you know, so they do make, make changes and adjustments based on the, the feedback that's provided. That's right, that's right. And so on, on this transition, I think the, the key call out is when the transition happens, there's nothing for you to do. This is all done in the back, fast, seamless and integrated for you all. And it literally should take under one minute, right? So it should be super quick. Now, the question I asked our team, which is I know what all of you are gonna go to, hey, worst case scenario, if something doesn't go wrong, what happens? And we have beefed up the payroll support for the cohorts that are gonna be moving so that you'll have fast access to make sure that gets right. There was another bit of confusion on, hey, wait a second, this new QuickBooks Online payroll product, do I get, our, do I get a discount on that so that I can pass that along to my clients or, or roll that into the way I contract? Yes, we're still finalizing that. You'll be hearing more from us, that, but you will be getting a discount, okay, clearly. Yeah. And then I think the final piece is we have a internal charter to make sure that none of you are surprised by the changes that we're making. If you all have noticed, the pace of the changes that we're making is accelerating literally every month. It is astounding how much innovation that we're putting out. I know for all of you power users, it's hard, right? Change when you have a way of working, that change can be disruptive to your schedule. And that's why we try to communicate to you. One of the big things that I found that was an aha to me is a number of you have opted out of our emails. So that means, we're, we're trying to communicate to you, but we actually can't reach you. And so then it's more depend, you know, we're dependent on you to be checking our resources like firm of the future, or we're getting the word out in, in forums such as this for you to hear. But I would encourage you all, if you feel like you're not getting the communication, check your marketing preferences, you may have turned them off. And so we can't tell you about those alerts that are coming. 
That's a really yeah. good tip, Ted. Thank you for sharing that. And I was just going to say, we've got several people that have asked some questions or made some comments and stuff. And some of them, I think it would be awesome if maybe perhaps not you, but perhaps some of your team, if we could share these questions with you and you all could post the answers for us in the QB Power Hour Facebook group um, so people can kind of get their answers there. Um, because as you know, we do want to share tasks and workflows with everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, any final comments, but I do appreciate you kind of coming out and clarifying some of this. Cause I think that was important for people to, to get that clarification. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's it on, um, payroll. I think in terms of, I know you, you all have the rest of your show to get to, I think there's a lot that I'd love to share with you of what have we been up to in terms of driving more improvements with pro advisor and with our different product experiences. But let's, let's come back to that when we've got more time and we can go into that in depth. I think the key thing I want all of you all to hear from me directly is we're prioritizing our relationship with you. That's why we're out here. Number two, there's a ton of changes that we are making that I think are amazing, like month end review, getting advanced for your books, all of that goodness that you're gonna talk about with tasks and workflows in advance, that's really a game changer and premium apps. Those integrations are super helpful too. And there's a lot more that we're gonna be doing. Um, so we'd love to come back and share more about that in an appropriate time. Well, you know, Ted, I know we'd love to have you back and maybe what we can do, because Dan has done a fabulous job of booking us out for quite a while um, yes. on our scheduled power hours, but maybe what we can do is do a special power hour on a Tuesday at the same time in between our regularly scheduled mm -hmm. ones so we could hear from you and talk about some of these other things um, sooner rather than later. Yeah, that'd be great. A deep dive with Ted. There you go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, All right. Go well, ahead. we better get back to tasks and workflows. So, Dan, do you want to go ahead and get going on the slides for us? Yeah. Oh, somewhere Thank somehow you, I went all the way back to the beginning. So here we go. Okay. So uh, you're going to take the uh, the task piece, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Or am I speaking to it? I, I can't remember how we set this up. Oh, and Ted's going to, just, just so you're aware, Ted's going to stay with us, uh, but he's just going to be in the background uh, listening and, and, and maybe he'll pick up a few things. <laughs> there you go. All right. So I'll go ahead and talk about the tasks and then um, on the slides and then uh, Dan will talk about the workflows on the slides. And then I'm actually going to go into QBO and show you from the accountant perspective and from the client perspective, how things work, show you how to create some of these automated workflows. that will save you significant amount of time. But first, let's talk briefly about tasks. We're going to go through the slides quickly so we can get into the product and show you there. But as you know, you're familiar with tasks already from our QBOA work area where you can assign tasks to different team members and due dates and you can create projects like, for example, monthly bookkeeping that has 10 or 15 different tasks within it. Um, so you're already familiar with some of the tasks. Well, in QBOA, most of these clients have that now. It, it's rolled out to everybody, I should just say. They have tasks in QBOA advanced, I'm sorry, QBOA V. QuickBooks Online Advanced. So say, for example, you got a small business and they have five employees. They have tasks within Advanced where they can work on these tasks and assign them to team members and things like that. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you. But then they also have workflows where you can send reminders to your client or your team. You're going to see how you can create, for example, on invoices, you can send reminders. Your invoice is due in seven days. Your invoice is due in three days. Your invoice is now past due. So you can automate reminders to be sent to your client for unpaid invoices, as well as a lot of other automated workflows. So this is showing you where can, you can access the tasks. I'm going to go ahead and kind of, and workflows. I'm going to go ahead and ask Dan, let's just skip through some of these. You can refer yeah. back to the screenshots later, and I'm going to go in and demo to you. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing to let you take control here. I love control. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me make sure I am sharing the correct screen. That's always a challenge. That and time zones. Okay, you guys <laughs> should be seeing um, QBO Advanced Demo. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this one that I'm logged in right here, I'm logged in as an employee. So let's pretend it's um, 
whatever kind of company, um, let's just call it Craig's Design and Landscaping because we use that as a sample company a lot. So let's say we're, you know, in Craig's and I'm an employee. Let's pretend I'm the sales rep. You'll notice over here, I have my tasks and you'll be able to see the tasks that have been assigned to me and the tasks that are created by me. Because I'm an employee and I'm not the admin, I don't see everyone's tasks. So I'll show you the accountant or admin perspective in just a second. So this is the sales rep's perspective. So these are ones that have been been put in here. So let's say I called Ted about a bill that he hasn't paid yet. Ted, come on, get with it. <laughs> so I called him up and he says, oh, I'm sorry, I just paid it yesterday. You should see it today. So I can come in here and say, okay, that's completed because I've talked to him about it. So now you'll see I don't have as many under uh, um, overdue tasks, but under upcoming, I need to review my pro advisor certification. Yes, we all need to do that. The VCon is going on this week. So if you haven't done it yet, you can renew your core certification or advanced certification. VCon's going on today and tomorrow. We'd love to have you join us over there um, for that. They're also doing their core certification and advanced. So join us for that. Um, oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, so those are my active tasks and here's my completed tasks. So once I marked it completed, I can see this over here. I can always create a new task whenever I want to, like... Um, check on, um, I don't know, uh, check on upcoming um, renewed lease. I don't know what to put in here. I'm not good at coming up with things. And I didn't even things spell, on the fly. <laughs> I didn't even spell lease right. Yeah, I'm an accountant. I'm not as creative. <laughs> so let me just give it a date and I could put additional stuff in there. Notice as the employee, I can only create tasks for myself. I can't assign it to someone else. So I'll save that. And then I would see that under at, uh, upcoming tasks. Now let's go look at it as the accountant or the admin. So for Craig's Design and Landscape, the admin, whoever's in charge of that, notice how they can see everyone's tasks. So not only can they see tasks for them or created by them, but they can see everyone's tasks. So I can see here the tasks um, that we just create or that we have created for Michelle as the client. And I can see upcoming tasks for myself as well as um, the sales rep in this example. All right. So as the admin for the company or the accountant user, I can see everyone's task. And when I create a task, like let's just review this, um, edit the task here you'll see I can assign tasks to different um, team members within the company. Now, within the firm, it's Aaron is the admin of this, or the, what do you call it, the lead accountant of this client. So it's got her name here. So she's the accountant user, Michelle, that's like the sales rep for the client. So the tasks are similar, but different from what we're used to. So these are tasks for the client company specifically and their employees within the company. When we go back out to QBOA and we look at our client dashboard, that's where we have the work area and we have tasks within our firm. We have projects. Um, so if we go into work, we have projects like monthly bookkeeping and within our projects, we have a variety of tasks. So it's, it's one of those things where we need to keep in mind now that we can have tasks in a client company if we yeah. want to, or we can assign tasks to client employees if we want or need to. So let's say you're in charge of accounts payable for a restaurant client and you want to um, make some tasks for the AP manager or for the owner to review the bills that need to be paid. You can assign tasks to that, um, that person in the company as opposed to within the firm. These are tasks within your firm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's the biggest one of one of the biggest things to 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 grasp with yeah. is the difference between tasks and where do you see them. I mean, uh, another example of that is is customers. You know, right? like you create a customer in your books, they also show up as a client on your client list. So they're 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 kind of tied together, but a little looser. So <laughs> so the ones that are in advance, you'll see a task section that's just for that particular client. Um, and work will show up regardless of, of uh, what flavor of, of, uh, uh, of QuickBooks Online your, your client happens to be, but that's more for your team and, and managing the projects and tasks with your team as opposed to 
the the tasks that you might want to have your 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 client do, or they can assign tasks amongst themselves. Um, you know, and that could be and it could be non non bookkeeping related you know tasks. It could be anything that you that you put in there uh, inside of that. Um, one of the questions that, that came up here is that can we create a recurring task? And I don't think that's a that's a possibility yet, right, Michelle? Not that I'm aware of, but what do we do when we want something? Send <laughs> feedback, give feedback. Or we have Ted right on the show, here. so he's here. <laughs> well, and I think we have David and some people from the QBOA team that are mm -hmm. listening in as well. So they're probably taking notes. But yes, recurring tasks for the clients to be able to do that would be a great idea as well. Um, you also, um, we'll talk about automating workflows in just a minute, but Dennis had a question. Can the task sync with Outlook or Google Calendar? Not at this time, but again, give feedback. And honestly, I personally don't want my work tasks for my firm or my tasks for these clients. I don't want that on my calendar. I want to keep that in the QBOA world because I've got enough stuff on my calendar already. I don't want it more um, littered yeah. with I like, like to go it. into QBOA and look to see what do I have to do today or this week, as opposed to seeing it on my calendar. But that's a personal preference. Yeah. So. As as someone with ADD, um, you know, uh, when I when I um, think of something that needs to be done, I'll, I'll I'll tell it to my phone, and put a reminder on my on my phone, and then I have a parent reminder that says check your reminders every day. So, so that might be something that you might put in your team work, you know, check the, check the tasks of your clients or something like that. So that, that's a, maybe a potential option uh, there. And, and Jonathan talked about uh, no wait, wait, the, uh, there's still no notification of task completion. Um, that would be another method of uh, getting notified and reasons that people stop their email communications and don't hear from, from Ted and the team when, <laughs> when they do those things. But that's, um, it's always good to have that option. I, I think um, from all the things that I've uh, talked to accountants and small business owners over the years, uh, having a choice is, is better than not having a choice at all. Yes. And um, I wanted to ask, um, Juan had a question here, can we create recurrent tasks? And that's where tasks are a little different between QBO advanced client company tasks, as opposed to your accounting firm tasks. In our accounting firm, within those projects, yes, we can make things recurring, not mm -hmm. within the company in QBO advanced at this time. But again, if you'd like that, send that feedback to them because they're continuing to work on QBO Advanced and updating those things. Um, so that's something to keep uh, in mind as well. And then Betty had a question about would these tasks replace the requests in the QBO, um, in the work tab? And let me just pop, whoops, that one signed me out. I was just going to pop back in here. You can do client requests from the work area. And this might be where your client, let's say Craig's design landscaping. Craig went out and bought a new truck and he said, Hey, how do I buy, how do I record this purchase in the work area? What you can do is you can say, well, Ted, you need to send me the purchase agreement. Um, so under here, under create client request, I can send that to the client. So this isn't creating a task within the QBO advanced company, though. And you can create client requests for, for clients that are using um, essentials or plus. They don't have to be using advanced. Um, right. So the client request is in the work feature as opposed to tasks within QBO advanced company. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's see. Do we have any other uh, questions or do we want to move on? Um, oh, and Dennis yeah. says um, he, yeah. he, on the calendar, it's personal preference. Yeah, different people are going to gonna like doing that. All right, Dan, All right. what do you think if you go ahead and talk about the workflows for a while and then let's yep. go in and demo workflows and then we can come back to questions because I want to make sure I have time to demo workflows because they're right, awesome. right. We want to see that. Now, what happened? Uh, every time I stop sharing, so, sorry. <laughs> Some, something goes okay, and then it starts all over again. <laughs> Passing forward. Okay, uh, well, let's uh, throw out a poll here. Are you currently using uh, 
tasks and workflows? Is it something that you have have been using? Was there other other questions in there? And every time I share, because I only have one monitor, everything gets reshuffled, <laughs> and now Moves I can't all see. <laughs> well, David put a great great comment in the chat area, and thank you, David. David is a key part of the QBOA team, and he said we are taking notes. So I love to hear that. Thank <laughs> you. And um, he said that the task and workflows will send you notifications through the QBO app if you have it installed on your phone, and that's one option. And I will show you that when we go in and we create workflows and things. You can have it um, notify like a company email or notify um, different people. You can copy different people on the email. And also some of those you can set up to notify you in the mobile app. So I think that's a great feature for not just us accounting professionals, but for these clients that are using QBO Advanced. And I can't wait to show you some of these workflows and, and think about how it can help not just us, but really help our clients. I'm gonna stop the, uh, stop the poll because it looks like most folks have, have answered but yeah, it's uh, this is something that that a lot of people aren't aren't aware of or using. So this is a, a great exposure, I think, uh, <laughs> to to this uh, to these features. So um, we want to just talk a little bit about the invoice approval. This is the uh, newest uh, template that's built in inside of uh, of QuickBooks uh, Online Advance with with regards to the workflows and with 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 uh, with respect to the workflows. The workflows and tasks are somewhat related. Like, so, like you can create a workflow that creates a task and assigns it to someone. So this is this is all in service to speed streamlining your workflow, right? So, so invoice approval is one of those things that that has recently uh, come out. So, uh, what is it, right? So, uh, if you have a situation where uh, a, thir a, cert a certain a certain dollar amount <laughs> you want. Um, you want somebody to be involved with that before you know things actually happen. Uh, this this could certainly be you know a case of um, you know you don't want just anyone creating uh, invoices and sending those out and and those types of things without your your knowledge. Uh, so this allows uh, someone to be able to approve those email or approve those invoices before the next step would would happen, right? So when you go into the workflow template, and Michelle will, will, will demonstrate this, when you go into the workflow template, you can add some conditions. In this case, it, the amount is more or equal to $10,000, right? So you wouldn't want to necessarily have an invoice for $15,000 to automatically start, start going unless you have that approval. So in this case, the, the actions then send for approval, you choose a person, and then you have some options of how that, how that person is notified uh, with regards to sending an email, sending a notification, or and or adding a task to the task manager for that person to do. And then also, if it's not approved, you can then, uh, or within seven days, they, it sends a reminder <laughs> to that approval. So, uh, you know, catching, uh, catching those things before they become, you know, fall off or fall through the cracks. Uh, so this is what it looks like when someone creates a work, uh, an invoice that needs approval, right? Uh, so obviously this workflow and this invoice are not related because this one says for $700 and we just talked about $10,000, but you can set that threshold however you like. Um, but in, uh, in this case, someone has created a user or created an invoice that does not, uh, that, that requires that approval, that threshold or those conditions in that you set up uh, are met. And it says, okay, this, this invoice needs internal approval, right? And then what happens is that the invoice, when it's not approved, will have in the upper right here and, or the upper left, uh, you'll see the pending approval. Uh, and then there'll be a more details um, information there for anyone who does not have the approval option. Right, and then if it's not approved, let's say, you know, this, this, was, this shouldn't have been created and that person denies it. Uh, then it will just say not approved. And that's that's really the end of that transaction because it's not gonna be able to be uh, sent until someone then approves uh, that invoice. Uh, so there's there's several, um, on, on the invoices tab where you're, when you go in and, and, and look at just the, all the list of invoices, uh, you can see uh, a variety of options here where it's uh, Need not sent, but it needs approval. That there will be different statuses in that in that status column. Uh, 
if it's not sent but pending approval, uh, it'll, it'll look a little different. Uh, or if it's denied uh, and not sent, that will that will look there as well. And, and admins and users with invoice approval process will will see those. Uh, those that don't won't see that at all. All right. So why using workflows in QuickBooks Online Advanced in general? Right. So you spend less time in manual or repetitive work. Right. It frees up your High value talents for, for more strategic tasks, you know, rather than running your QuickBooks, you're running your business, right? Um, and, and that's one of the, oh, Brad Smith always would say that, you know, where it's like your action creates the, the you know, data, you, you do an action and it creates the data for you. So it's, that's a, a all in service to, to what workflows will do and automate some reminders and approvals uh, in, in uh, there's pre preset workflow templates that will help you. And they're, they're all kind of um, separated into th uh, three sections and we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, so the next one is next poll. Oops, I stopped sharing here. So we'll go to the next poll. Uh, which areas would you like to see uh, more enhancements in? Would it be just in general tasks or workflows or both? <laughs> right. Both. We always want it all, Dan. <laughs> right. That's uh, that's always the case, you know. More, it's more, like, more. Where do you yeah. want to see them first? How about that? Let's yes. Start. Which is a priority? Yes, because it's always all of the above. And I want to address something here too. I'm I apologize for this, but a side question. Somebody said I just passed a QBOA certification in January, February. I don't need to do it again this week, right? No, you don't need to. Um, but if you passed it last year, um, you need to do the recertification. And the recertification for core and advanced is today, and it repeats tomorrow. So it repeats tomorrow. And if you can't attend live, but you still want to watch this stuff after tax season, go ahead and register for the VCon. I put QB training events dot com in the chat um so qb training events.com if you register for the vcon and can't attend because you're busy with taxes you can self-study and listen to the recordings um next week after tax season um because you want to do your certification um before the end of june or july i can't remember july dan is it june or july then, uh, july 31st is, Thank is you. typically the the cutoff date and then the date for where you've um if you've taken it prior to that date, you'll have to do it. I think it's November 1st, right? Thank so if you, you passed your, yeah. um, if you passed your last exam, whatever that happened to be advanced or, or regular, you know, QuickBooks online certification uh, prior to November 1st, then you're in that, I got to recertify by, uh, by, by the 31st of July. And I might just add one more clarification. If you are advanced certified, you do not have to do the recertification for core because actually the first two modules of core, uh, well, there's only two modules in the core recertification. It's the same in the advanced recertification, but there's an additional third module in the advanced recertification. So if you're advanced recertified, you only have to do the advanced research. You can get it done in an afternoon. So get her done. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it looks like <laughs> you're done. you're correct, Michelle. All of them was the uh, was the was the top vote getter there for for that poll. Um, so of course we won it all. <laughs> we always do, don't we? Right. Okay. So can I go ahead? You, Sorry. I'll just really quick go through you know the the overview and then and then you'll take a dive into actually doing some of these things. So you enter into workflows from the left navigation menu bar. There'll be a section there in QBO Advanced. Uh, for workflows. And um, there's some pre preset templates that are really kind of divided into three main areas, right? So cash flow in or cash inflow management, cash outflow management, and keeping the books clean. Um, so the, the workflow templates that are going to, that you're going to see there are going to be all in service to, to those three major areas. So first one is the cash inflow management. You can send invoices Timely, right? So invoice approval, as we just talked about, that is uh, managing your cash inflow, right? So if it doesn't get approved, then it's not going to get paid and it's not going to, you know, be deposited. So that's going to stop the cash from inflowing. Uh, you can remind yourself to send invoices. So if it's in a queue waiting to be sent, you, the, those, those workflows can be, can be created uh, and then automatically sending invoices. So this is where 
no no touch right so <laughs> it all you can set up a, a condition where it automatically sends anything that's unsent so that is a great uh, great feature there um, and then collecting payments in a timely manner so you've got send customer payment reminders so you can set up multiple workflows uh, based on different date requirements that payments are due so again you don't have to uh, have a collections person uh, you know send constantly calling calling folks if, if payments are, are, are undue or I'm sorry, payments are due, but not collected, you can have those payment due reminders based and you can change the, the, the verbiage in, in each of those reminders. Like, hey, it's coming up, <laughs> hey, it's due. And where are you? Where did you go? What? <laughs> Why are you not paying the bill? <laughs> All right, and then automatically sending a payment receipt you know, acknowledging, uh, you know, can I get a receipt? You know, that those things are uh, workflow templates that are already there. Um, and then reminding of things that are that are past due if it's overdue. Um, and then paying vendors in a timely fashion is another in, in the outflow management. Uh, so reminding yourself to pay the pay your vendors before the due date. And then keeping the books clean, you know, making sure that you're uh, reminding yourself to do, uh, to record the bank deposits, you know, uh, last thing that, uh, that that people remember is to put it in the bank and then the bank feed comes in and then it puts it in a different place than you actually you know wanted it to go. So reminding yourself to, to do that. Um, and then just some of the, there's going to be a workflow summary when you've created multiple workflows and you can edit them from from that dashboard. Um, and then this is just a, a payment a due reminder, but actually what we'll have is uh, is Michelle go ahead and whoop, I'll stop sharing so that you can Yay. start sharing again. <laughs> and it will actually take a look at the Yay. under the hood of yes. creating a creating a workflow. Okay, let me just move that control bar. Okay, so I love sharing it. So thank you, Dan, for giving an intro and going over kind of all the templates that are out there already. So I am in QBO account as either I, I'm in as the accountant user right now, but the company admin would also see on this left nav, left nav bar, you'll see workflows. So here's where Dan was mentioning, we have the preset templates that you can use, my workflows, and then history. You also have those tabs across the top here, templates, which you can create um, templates that Intuit already has set for you. You can just customize them and I'll show you that in just a minute. But you also can do custom workflow. If Intuit doesn't have a template for you, you can create your own custom workflow. I'm gonna demo that as well. My workflows, Dan mentioned the list of all the uh, workflows that are already set up. So you'll notice I set up one here for invoice approval. So what I did, I'm just gonna review that for you. So under edit, I said, okay, I'm the owner of the company. Um, let's edit. There we go. Uh, come on. I hate it when it gets slow like this. Living at the lake, my internet is not as fast as it used to be. Okay, yeah, no. why are while, you, while you're, while you While we're waiting for your, uh, you know, the, the bits to go up and down from space, uh, there was a, a question about where do these reminders show up? Uh, so when you've created a, a reminder, those, those are going to show up either you know, wherever you ch tell them to go, which is, <laughs> which is nice. Again, having the choice of, of where those, those will go. So when you create the, uh, the workflow, you can either choose to have it sent as an email, a mobile notification, if it's available as a mobile notification. So, uh, you know, invoice approval, for example, could just pop up on the guy's phone uh, when they're logged into, you know, their, their phone inside of the, the app. Hey, you need to approve it. You can do and, and act on it right then and there, you know, right from the phone. Uh, or uh, it could show up as a task, right? So you have all of those three choices as, as an option to be able to uh, where those reminders are, are actually going to go. Yes. Thank you, Dan. Did, I, did we catch up with reality? You did. My, my computer <laughs> right. just decided to misbehave for a minute there. So, um, right. Blame it on the I'm the, I'm the owner <laughs> of the company and I want to make sure that I approve high dollar invoices. So I want to say my sales rep, which I'm going to show you in just a minute from the sales rep perspective, any invoice that's greater than or equal to. So I can choose how much I want to do here. I can say any invoice that's greater than or equal to five grand. Maybe I don't want to worry about the ones less than those. I could add additional conditions to that. 
I, if I wanted to. Um, if you don't want to do that, obviously you can get rid of that. You could specify for certain customers. Maybe, oh. maybe I've got a specific customer that has written me a lot of bad checks. Um, so I might want to have every invoice approved. So I might want to have it zero for a particular customer. So I could come in and choose one particular customer if I wanted and, to. And Michelle, yeah. Um, on the uh, on that uh, customer, there's a with that there's a um, the qualifier there is within or is not within. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was a sticking point for me uh, to find you know to understand what that is. Uh, so by default. All of the customers, you know, if you don't put a condition in there about customers, all of the customers will will show up. Mm -hmm. uh, but really what it means is uh, include or exclude, right? Yes. So you could choose, if you chose not within and chose just like five five or so customers that it doesn't apply to, then every other customer will, will this will apply to. Uh, or if you choose a specific subset of customers, you would choose within and then choose uh, choose those specific customers. That's a great clarification. Thank you, Dan. So on this one, though, I didn't have it for a particular customer. I had it for all customers, any invoice over 5,000. So if this happens, then take this action. Create a task for Erin, and we'll pretend she's the owner of the company. Send her a notification, and this is where you can choose email or mobile. So you can get notifications. Hey, Erin, you need to... Um, you need to go in and approve this invoice. If it is not approved, so you can choose here. So if we got an invoice over five grand, take these actions, create a task, notify her. And if she doesn't do anything about it, what do you want me to do? You can say, okay, well, with if not approved within so many days, you can choose, do you want to send a reminder or auto approve it? Some man, some some people might say, well, you know what, just go ahead and auto approve it. I don't think I would do that because that <laughs> negates the purpose of having an approval approval process. <laughs> um, within the email, you can add additional. So if I want to send it to Aaron as well as someone else, like the sales rep, I could do that, but they can log in and see it. Or you can do a BCC. And this is great because this is where you can change and customize the invoice um, email reminder, the e email that telling them to approve the invoice. So for example, we got invoice what invoice number requires approval invoice doc number let's say i want to say the invoice number in the amount of if you hit the uh, pound sign or the hashtag sign if you want to put in here in the amount of four and then i could also do hashtag the customer name is pending approval so you can customize that email to provide that information. So, you know, when Erin looks at the document number, she may not know what it is. I can give her some additional detail in the message for the email. So again, if you wanna add um, custom fields, you hit the hashtag or the pound sign, and you can include custom fields here for what you want um, to, to put in there. So that's the emails um, that you could send out. And then in if you do the mobile, that's gonna go to the mobile app where she can see the notification out here. Now, what I did is I created this um, approval workflow, and then I went in, I'm gonna discard any changes. I went in and I pretended I was the sales rep. So you have me, Michelle, the client, so this is employees of the company, like a sales rep of the company. They're in QBO Advanced. Notice I don't see workflow because I can't, as an employee, I don't have permissions. Otherwise, I could go in and edit the rule for an invoice approval and change it, create an invoice and you know embezzle money or whatever. So the employees don't have access to edit those workflows or create the workflows. But what I did, I'm going to go ahead and pull up some previous invoices because last night uh, prepping this, because as you know, sometimes things don't behave as they should. <laughs> I went ahead and created as the sales rep, I created two invoices. So the first invoice I did for $5,000. Notice up here at the top, it says needs approval because that invoice was for $5,000, it met the approval of that workflow. I also then created an invoice for 3750, which is under the amount, notice how it says approved. So I love how you can use this. Um, it helps the owner of the company have more control, save time, 
um, and to be able to set some of those workflows. And invoice approval is just one, but wait, there's more. <laughs> I love this. So under the templates, and I see we only got four minutes. So bear with me, people, because this is great. We mentioned how we have all these preset templates. Dan reviewed those with you. Estimate follow-up reminder. Well, this template will send a follow-up reminder to my customer so that they know, hey, you need to accept the estimate. What if I want to remind my sales rep after we send an estimate out, follow up with them to see if they have any questions or if everything looks okay. So I can create a custom workflow. All right. So this is going to be um, follow up on estimates. And so you can choose the source transaction. This is the trigger that you're going to use to tell it when to do something. So I'm going to say when the source transaction is an estimate, when the estimate amount is whatever, well, I want it for all estimates. So I'm going to say when the estimate status is uh, within pending any pending estimate and I could add additional criteria for amounts or customers or or whatever I wanted to do I want you to send a reminder or um yeah send a reminder let's say three days after the estimate um after the estimate is created okay so what I'm saying is if there's an estimate that's pending that means the client hasn't accepted it yet. Send a reminder three days after the estimate. Now, do I want to create a reminder in tasks? Yes. I want to remind my salesperson, which is Michelle, the client. I want to remind my salesperson to contact that client, review estimate number with client. I want the Michelle, the sales rep, to call the client, see if they have any questions. Was the estimate okay? So they're following up so I don't lose sales. And I can say close the task when the estimate is accepted. Do I want to send the customer an email? Not for this one because I'm sending them a separate one um, using the Intuit template. Do I want to send a company email? Maybe you want all notifications to go to a central company email account. And do you want to send a push notification and you can have it pop up then for them to see um, that they're going to be getting it. An estimate needs your approval. Go look at it. So I love, and then you click save and enable. So save just saves it, but enable turns it on. So from here forward, every time I create an estimate, three days later, the sales rep is going to get a reminder task that says contact the client to see if they had any questions about that estimate. How cool is that? Right? Yeah, this, I mean, I, mean, the, the I, I hate the word, to use the word game changer, but I mean, it, it is a really differentiation uh, between it. the other versions of, of QuickBooks Online. I mean, if, 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 you're, if, you're, if you're like uh, a lot of people who love the desktop, I mean, this really is, oh, you know, le <laughs> that's le so letters. 2000, 2000s or something. This is customer <laughs> letters. This is, you know, all those things that, uh, you know, that you can do in, in desktop with, with letters and engagements and mail merge, but without all of the Microsoft nonsense, uh, which <laughs> trying to well, get all those, uh, those, those Word doc templates yep. uh, working and sent and, out properly. And think about all the admin time that this saves for these companies and these employees and how it helps the owner manage and control their business while saving time. And I think also it can help with sales. It can help with cash flow because you have the invoice reminders going out. I mean, it just can help from so many different manners. Um, I just think this, this yeah. feature alone, the workflows and tasks is worth getting QBO advanced in my opinion. Yeah. Um, because it's a huge saver for us and for our clients. So I'm glad to share it with you. Um, I know we went over it, you know, kind of quickly, but you've got screenshots to refer back. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put the link to the uh, QBO advanced test drive um, in the chat. Or if you just Google QBO test drive, you can go out there and um, play around with this and create some sample workflows on your right. own. Um, so I'll copy this. Mm -hmm. Um, test drive for you. Go and I launched the last. I launched the last poll uh, while you were while you were talking there, and some people starting to answer it. Has your opinion changed since tasks and workflows uh, were introduced? And and we have uh, someone watching from the UK, and she's saying she's so jealous that she doesn't <laughs> have that. 
because it's only U.S. based uh, QBO advanced. Ted, could you could you maybe speak to um, you know the global versions of 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 QuickBooks Online and where advanced is coming? Because you know every time we have we talk about advanced, uh, our Canadian friends or <laughs> or UK our global friends they they are like, why don't we have this yet? Yeah, the, the, the good news is there's very active conversations about where do we take advanced because we see the amazing traction it's having in the U.S. So I would say stay tuned. Can't say anything at this point, but <laughs> right. there's a lot Born of interest. Secrecy. From- <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, a couple other things I, I want to point out and answer is another way that you can get to the workflows instead of the left nav bar is under the big gear up on the top under tools you'll see manage workflows. And then I saw several questions in there. Ted had mentioned, you know, hey, everybody, make sure that you didn't opt out of our emails. And everybody says, "Uh, where do I do that? If you go under the gear, Intuit account, and under the data privacy area, that's where you can make sure to enable those email notifications from Intuit. I don't want to go in there because then everybody will see my, you know, login name and password or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, it's under Intuit account. Okay, so you can go in there and make sure under data privacy in there. All right. Um, Just posted a link to help people go straight there. Perfect. Thank you. I I didn't notice that. I saw that question. A lot (laughs) of those questions went before. Um, Okay, so any last minute things that we need to cover or some more questions um, that we want to answer? We've run over just a little bit, so uh, we'll blame Ted for that. Uh, but it, I mean, thank you, Ted, for, for coming today and, and uh, you know, talking to our, our audience and talking to us and, um, you know, really appreciate you, you know, being able to, to share what you can about some of the things that are that are priorities for for the accounting community. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, we'd love to have you, you know, come back and, and you know, go a little deeper into be great. into your mind. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for your commitment. Thanks everybody on the call for joining, especially in the last you know week before the tax deadline. Know everybody's time is super precious. So love being with you. Excited to return and share more and continue the conversation and learn. Thank yeah, you, we'll Ted. Have- and we look forward to, to hearing more from you in the future. So thank you. Thank you. So yeah, just coming up, just a reminder, our, our next one will be on uh, niche nuances with, uh, with real estate. Uh, so join us uh, in a couple of weeks for uh, a new QB Power Hour with, uh, with Gita Faust will be joining us. And uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you then. And Michelle, it's always great to see you. And who knows what will be behind me next time. <laughs> That's right. It's going to be where in the world is Dan. So. <laughs> right, right. It'll All be right. A, a fun guessing game. <laughs> yes. So thank you again, Ted. Um, thank you, Dan. And everybody, I'm going to go see you in VCon. I hope to see you over there. Okay. All right. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.